Sun on BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. It's qualifying day here in Japan. We're at the iconic Suzuka circuit for round four of the 2024 Formula One season. And after a weather affected Friday, the final practice session earlier today saw all 10 teams making up uh, for lost time and the beginnings of a pecking order. Now we'll see everyone's cards laid down as the 20 drivers that make up the grid get ready to set the fastest laps they can. Guiding you through all the coverage is myself, Harry Benjamin. Alongside me is racing driver, Alice Powell and BBC F1 correspondent Andrew Benson. And Alice, the weekend so far with FP2 as a bit of a blip due to uh, the weather, uh, meaning there was no real running. Um, Verstappen back to being the man to be. Yeah, normal service carried on didn't it in free practice from Max Verstappen of course he retired last time out with that brake issue in Melbourne which sort of ended his nine he had nine race win streak before before that retirement so uh, he'll be looking to start that streak again here this weekend and he did that by starting off pretty well in free practice three he was over two and a half tenths quicker than his teammate Sergio Perez and who do we think then is behind the Red Bulls. What what do you think we've gathered from the practice session, I suppose, earlier today that gives us the best indication as to uh, who's fighting for that second row? Well, in free practice one, you, we would have said the Ferraris, but they didn't look very strong, did they, in free practice three? They uh, were seventh, was Carlos Sainz, and Leclerc was down in tenth, eight and a half tenths off uh, the Max Verstappen. And it was actually the uh, two Mercedes of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton, uh, who are P3 and P4, three tenths off, albeit. But we didn't really expect to see them there. We were expecting to see those those Ferraris. So if you're going by free practice three, which is, is the best re representation that we've really had over the weekend of qualifying, then you're going to say the Mercedes. And uh, that would be incredibly encouraging, wouldn't it? And uh, Lewis Hamilton saying after, after FP1, a really good session, best the car has felt all year uh, in a season that has statistically been the worst start uh, to his Formula One career. Uh, previously, it was the 2009 season with uh, McLaren. So a long time since he's uh, endured such a poor start to the year. So optimism once again uh, from Hamilton and Mercedes. Um, best of the rest, if we're looking a little bit lower down in the bottom half of the field i'd say so far i've been quietly impressed with uh, uh, the home hero yuki Tsunoda in that rb it's a fierce fight for those uh, uh, well maybe a ninth place or a tenth place finish come the race but uh, those bottom five positions are hotly content contested very much so he's been doing a, a, a great job so far and certainly showing Daniel Ricciardo the way everyone coming into this season was expecting certainly Ricciardo to be slightly higher up uh, the field than he is now and challenging Yuki but it's been sort of plain sailing for Yuki hasn't it in terms of uh, the rivalry between him and his teammate he'll be looking of course to try and score his first ever points finished here at his home Grand Prix so uh, he'll be looking to, to start off pretty well in this first qualifying session but he's had some good practice sessions at first yeah Sonoda who uh, qualified uh, last year at the Japanese Grand Prix in ninth hasn't scored a point yet at home hoping to uh, make that right come race day on Sunday and has so far out qualified his teammate uh, three in all three races uh, so far this season um, let's bring you up to date with how the standings look both in the drivers and the team starting with the drivers despite retiring from Australia and uh, well bouncing back with a vengeance uh, come Sunday we shall see it's Max Verstappen who leads the way uh, 51 points to his name he has a four point gap ahead of the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc then it's the other Red Bull of Sergio Perez in third Carlos Sainz in the other Ferrari is fourth and Oscar Piastri uh, in the McLaren rounds out the top five in the driver standings and over in the constructors it's Red Bull who lead the way 97 points to their name four points ahead of Ferrari then it's McLaren Mercedes and Aston Martin who round out the top five RB currently winning the battle in the lower end of the field they've got six points to their name ahead of Haas who have uh, four points then it's Williams Sauber and Alpine the three teams at the back who have yet to get off the mark well 
teams and drivers steadily preparing then for the uh, Q1 session. Three parts to qualifying. We will eliminate uh, the slowest five drivers uh, come the end of uh, this first 18 minutes, which is about to get underway uh, as I speak. Uh, and we will see everybody down uh, from uh, 16th and below trying to get into uh, the next stage of qualifying. And first out on the track is the Haas of Kevin Magnussen, the Danish driver whose best qualifying around this Suzuka circuit came back in 2014 uh, in his McLaren days with a seventh place finish. But this, Alice, is a track that fans love, drivers love. It's super challenging. You, you're rewarded for your success, but you are punished for the smallest mistake. 18 turns, 10 to the right, 8 to the left, a figure of 8 layout, just over 5.8 kilometers. Uh, but everyone loves it. Those are the best tracks, aren't they? The ones with the high risk, uh, the best reward. And you're full throttle for at least 64% of this lap. And that fantastic first section going up through, up the hill through turns three, four, five, six, seven. Lovely section of, of corners. I think it's got a bit of everything here, hasn't it? Including the weather. We saw a little bit of mixed weather yesterday. Free practice two was pretty much a write-off with it being slightly too dry for for the intermediate tyre, but then it was a bit too wet for the, the dry tyres. Magnussen's the only one that's decided to venture out on track at the moment. Max Verstappen and co all waiting patiently in the garage. Mechanics poised to take off the uh, the tyre warmers. A bit of changing going on in Ferrari. Wheels only just actually going on Charles Leclerc's car, who was, of course, moaning, wasn't he, quite heavily on the radio at the end of free practice three saying come on guys why are you sending us out in the garage so late and they were sat for quite a while in the the garage and i did say to myself this is leaving it a little bit late to get in that final run on the soft tire and uh charles leclerc ended up agreeing in the end because he, he missed out really on on getting a decent run at the end of the session. Yeah, Leclerc wasn't uh, too happy at the end of that session, was he? Uh, as you say, the only car out on track at the moment is Kevin Magnussen in the hat, and this is the sound of the Danish driver as he makes his way up through the S's in the first sector. Then comes the Dunlop curve as you rise over the crest to the left hander before a slight dab on the brakes into Degna 1, and then you're heading downhill into the next right hander of Degna 2. So many cars running out wide there onto the little bit of AstroTurf runoff that you get to the left hand side. Magnussen keeping it neat and tidy for now on that soft compound of tyre makes it through the hairpin where he actually spun out into the gravel earlier on in practice not so much this time around now the run down to the left hand a slight downhill double left hand of spoon curve gets onto the red and white curving on the outside it unsettles the house ever so slightly in the rear he keeps it pointing in the right direction down the back straight now towards the fastest corner on the track, the left-hander, 130R, flat out if you can, before you then break just before the 100-meter braking board, which drivers see on their left-hand side into the final chicane, the Casio Triangle, 16, 17, and 18, which brings you around the final corner and across the line for a lap of this Suzuka circuit. Kevin Magnussen with a 131.203 for the Haas driver uh, with the... Uh, both Haas drivers in the form of Max and his teammate Nico Hülkenberg saying they think they might have a tricky weekend. Um, Magnussen's been struggling with the balance of his Haas so far and Hülkenberg uh, expecting a, a tricky weekend with the high speed corners and the fast direction changes, particularly in that sector one, uh, not being uh, to uh, Haas's favour so far. But Hülkenberg always seems to uh, bring out a great, a great qualifying lap, doesn't he, the German? So uh, we'll see what he can do uh, come the end of these next uh, 14 or so minutes of Q1. As we get more cars out on track, Alice, the two Williams and uh, the two, uh, well, the one Red Bull so far, Sergio Perez out there on track now. Obviously, quite a few of the drivers are expecting the, the track to improve slightly. So they uh, are waiting... We've had a good five, four or five minutes of the session now. Max Verstappen, he has decided to venture out now on temperature watch. Air temperature is fairly similar than it was earlier on for free practice three. 17.9 degrees, track temperature 
pretty much the same as well as we've got a long queue of cars now in the pit lane everyone seems to to go at once now there's been a lot of talk about this there was talk about this in free practice one Hulkenberg didn't he try to get past I think it was one of the RBs by crossing the the pit lane line you're not meant to heavily impede or slow down in the pit lane this year but uh, well it seems like that is what's going on at the moment yeah, we've seen it on multiple occasions, and there really is a, a big old queue coming out. Here's Piastri. Very dangerous from Russell. Copy that. And that was uh, Piastri on the radio. He was making his way down the pit lane rather slowly as the Mercedes of Russell is released from his garage. And so close was that that Piastri really had to turn left and almost uh, hit the uh, the wall on the left-hand side, the pit wall. Uh, so I'm sure race control will be looking at that one as an unsafe release from uh, the Mercedes team. Yeah, George was waving his hands, but I don't think he was doing that at Piastri because that wasn't Piastri's fault. It was uh, his team that he's probably waving his hands at. People say, well, why don't you just look as you come out of the garage? You know, you don't have to follow what the mechanic is saying. Well, I'm promise you your view is heavily restricted you can't turn look left look right you're restricted by your hands device and plus they sit so low in the car and the headrest is actually quite high that it is hard to to see you know if you've got someone fully alongside you uh, in the left hand side or right hand side so the FI stewards have noted that and are investigating that after this session so that's between George Russell and Oscar Piastri unsafe release yeah so uh, we'll keep you up to date uh, on that one uh, post session but uh, a lot of cars out on track then everybody now is out on track except for Kevin Magnussen who was the the early riser and got out there before anybody else so one of the things that we've seen throughout practice as Max Verstappen embarks on his uh, first fastest lap as he approaches uh, the Degnus uh, already 1.1 seconds up on Magnussen's sector one time. Uh, we're seeing the degradation to be quite high. One lap might be all you get to, for your best qualifying lap before the tyre falls off. Yes, so we saw it, didn't we, from Lando Norris in free practice three. He set an almighty first sector and then got it all out of shape at Degna 2, running and skateboarding effectively across the the curb there uh, and then he decided well I'll back off because he did lose a quite a bit of time in the process of his skateboard moment and then he just couldn't get the tyres back high degradation as you said Harry we've got the same C1 is the hard tyre C2 medium C3 is the soft so it's the same compounds that we have at Bahrain which is another real high degradation circuit temperatures not quite the same as as Bahrain but still high deg as Max Verstappen goes across the line four tenths clear of his teammate jumping up to to P1 and that is actually the lap time he's done a 128.8 is one second quicker than his Q1 time from last year it was a 129.8 the two Ferraris, Sainz and Leclerc, can only manage third and fourth on this occasion. And, and Perez, as you say, uh, about four tenths back on these opening runs uh, compared to his teammate in second. Uh, nine minutes and 44 seconds of Q1 remain. We're looking uh, to eliminate the slowest five drivers from this session uh, before we progress through to Q2 as we set the grid for Sunday's Japanese Grand Prix. The McLaren driver, Oscar Piastri, is next to cross the line. The birthday boy, the Australian, who was just turn 23 and goes third fastest half a second down on the quickest red bull of verstappen now one man who has a lot of eyes on him this weekend is his home race but also a lot of pressure that comes from being within the red bull junior team is yuki sonoda and has been looking best of the rest or best out of those bottom five teams so far he's currently just made his way through the hairpin personal best in sector one at the moment fernando alonso has just got up into second place splitting the two red bulls alonso uh, almost four tenths back from verstappen still waiting for lap times from norris sonoda bottas joe hulkenberg and gasly with uh, Magnussen back out there now, having been the first driver out on to the track. The two Mercedes of Hamilton and Russell have slotted into sixth and seventh. Hamilton uh, ahead of Russell, about eight tenths down from Verstappen. This is the sound 
back on board with the Japanese driver of Yuki Tsunoda. Up through the gears, round the final corner, personal best sector one and two. What can the Japanese driver do across the line? He go, goes quicker than Charles Leclerc, up into eighth place for the young Japanese racer. Leclerc ninth, Stroll rounds out the top 10, then it's Ricardo, Ocon, Albon, Gasly and Hulkenberg, the top 15. And if it stays like that, they will all progress through to Q2. Bottas has just put his Sauber up into 11th. That puts Hulkenberg down into the elimination zone in 16th with Sargent and Magnussen as we await the first lap time from Lando Norris who bounces across the entry curve to turn 16. The right-hander unsettles the car. He keeps it going. Would have lost a little bit of time there, but across is the line. Six passes for Norris, a six and a half tenths down on Verstappen. Yeah, he totally got the angle wrong there, heading over the first curve. And that bounced him across the track. And Yuki Tsunoda nearly got it all on out of the second Degner's running slightly wide. It's a frustrating corner that, and, and it tends to be one where your generally feed, general feedback is, is understeer through there. And we've seen that from several drivers across the weekend. Yuki Tsunoda has just given us another demonstration. But yeah, Norris, he'll be disappointed with that. Piastri, he's there in P4. Six, well, five and a half tenths off Max Verstappen and a good job from Oscar here last year his first front row start here last year and his first podium of course as well in Formula 1 a great opening gambit from Fernando Alonso as well. Uh, the closest man to Verstappen in these early stages. Verstappen set a lap time of 128.8. Uh, Alonso just over three tenths back. Then comes Perez, uh, Piastri and signs the top five. Uh, this is the sound of Piastri's teammate Lando Norris getting it all wrong going into the entry for the chicane. And really just clouted that inside curb. Yeah, it didn't hit it the best of angles when he initially hit the curb. He, uh, he got the angle slightly wrong, a bit too narrow, and then he actually ended up taking probably a little bit too much at the same time as, as well. And that sort of bounced him too far to the left, for the left, which was turn 17. And then turn 18 is the final corner on the circuit. But a great turnout. The fans certainly enjoying it. Some great outfits that we've been seeing across the weekend, that's for sure, Harry. It absolutely is. Uh, the Japanese fans certainly know how to uh, have fun at a Formula One event. Uh, it's a favourite for the drivers and teams, not only for the circuit, but for the sheer enthusiasm uh, that the fans uh, bring in as well. OK, a little bit of a lull now as teams back into the garage. Uh, the Williams uh, of Albon and Sargent are on an outlap, though. Magnussen's back out there too, uh, but at risk of elimination from this Q1 session, uh, as it currently stands, would be the Alpine of Pierre Gasly in 16th, the Haas of Nico Hülkenberg in 17th, the Williams of Logan Sargent 18th ahead of the other Haas of Kevin Magnussen and Joe Guan Yu in the Sauber down in 20th at the moment, 1.9 seconds off, his teammate Valtteri Bottas up in 12th at the moment, the Sauber team who are looking to try and score their first points of the season brought some upgrades uh, this weekend, indeed Joe's uh, best qualifying here has only been 14th place and that came back in 2022 with uh, Valtteri Bottas in his Mercedes days qualifying on the front row and winning the 2019 edition of the Japanese Grand Prix. That might be a bit out of touch for this weekend, but Bottas in 12th at the moment, hoping to be there or thereabouts in the fight for the lower end of the points. Verstappen currently fastest then ahead of Alonso, Perez, Piastri signs the top five. Norris, Hamilton, Russell, Sonoda, Leclerc, the top ten. Stroll, Bottas, Ricardo, Ocon and Albon, the 15 drivers who stand to make it through as it currently stands. But four minutes and 20 seconds remain. And uh, it's Albon and Sargent out there at the moment trying to better their laps on that soft compound of rubber. Sargent had that accident in free practice one yesterday didn't he at the Dunlop curve just not sort of realizing where he was on track a blind crest coming out of Dunlop curve caught him slightly off guard and the sound you can hear there is Alex Albon whizzing into the first Degners nice and tidy through the second one just about using enough curb but he is four tenths down from Max Verstappen but of course that is should, if he keeps up this pace, that will boost him slightly higher up the field, but whether it will be enough to uh, keep him from uh, the dreaded drop zone here in Q1. 
best qualifying of sick around this track for Alex Albon back in his Red Bull days in 2019 and pressure on the Williams team and also Logan Sargent as well the American in his second season has not progressed from Q1 uh, this year uh, and struggled to do so last year uh, managed to get an exceptional qualifying result uh, in Las Vegas towards the end of the 2023 season but has so far struggled in comparison with his teammate for outright pace indeed wasn't even taking part in qualifying last time around as he was forced to sit out as Alex Albon took over the chassis of that car due to the damage Albon sustained in Melbourne practice. Albon across the line. It's 11th fastest for the Williams driver. His teammate Sargent can only manage 15th, still on the brink of being knocked out. And will they get another shot at it? That's the question. These tyres don't seem to be lasting their best past one lap. Sargent was near enough matching Albon, so must have... Uh made a mistake somewhere along the line or just struggling for pace in that final sector so uh, I would so guess that uh, that might be it for, for Sargent if, uh, if those below him can improve Alex Albon should be fairly safe with that time don't want to commentators curse him of course but he should be fairly good there with that lap time in 11th place as we've got pretty much everybody else now streaming out on track apart from the front sort of five at the moment opting to to stay in hoping that they don't have to put anything else on the table they have to risk anything by going out on track as now it is Charles Leclerc. He feels like he has got still some work to do as he heads down into turn one. A slight lock up there into one. Quite smooth though out the exit as he heads up this brilliant section, Harry. We compared it earlier to a sort of an uphill Maggots Beckett's, which it certainly is. It's almost like an uphill roller coaster. As nice and smooth through Dunlop curb, no way near as much curb usage from him compared to Alex Albon. Certainly the Ferrari looking more settled than that Williams. Out of the second Degna for Charles Leclerc, now approaching the hairpin. Gasly in the Alpine also trying to better his lap. He's down in 17th. It's the bottom five we'll focus on mainly for this session as they risk being eliminated as it currently stands. It's Ocon, Gasly, Hulkenberg, Magnussen and Joe. They're all out there at the moment trying to set a better lap time. Joe just coming to the end of his outlap, so he'll just get enough time before the check and flag to get across the line for a final lap. Magnussen's running well in the second sector. Hulkenberg's had a decent first sector in the Haas. Gasly showing better than his teammate Ocon in the first sector, yet to see what Ocon could do in the middle sector. Back further up front. Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari is now making his way around the final corner. He's currently 10th fastest. The Ferrari have been hard to place so far, but he goes fourth fastest, Leclerc. A 129.3, just over four and a half tenths back from Verstappen. Gasly across the line, does just enough to get himself out of the elimination zone, but he's still on the brink. Pierre Gasly goes to 15th. He'll be held by the fact Sargent is now 16th and is in the pit. Sargent will not get another go as the chequered flag comes out. Magnussen improves, but it's only 16th. Out goes the Dane. What can his teammate do? Nico Hulkenberg, who... It's becoming a bit of a Mr. Saturday man, exceptional in qualifying. He's had a decent first two sectors. What can the German do across the line? Once again, getting the best he can out of the Haas, moves himself up into 11th spot. That puts Gasly down into the bottom five. We look next to the RB of Daniel Ricciardo in 15th and at risk at the moment. Esteban Ocon is still looking to try and get out of the bottom five. He does so. He crosses the line up into 10th. That puts Ricciardo down but Ricardo's next across the line does enough to get himself out of Q1 up into ninth for the RB that puts Bottas down into 16th Bottas still on a lap trying to find his way through can Stroll make it through he'll be the next driver at risk Bottas with a sensational lap gets the Sauber up into 8th spot that puts Stroll down into 16th Stroll out and eliminated in the Aston Martin along with Pierre Gasly who won't get another shot in the Alpine Kevin Magnussen took the flag in the Haas, out he goes in 18th, Logan Sargent 19th and Joe Guan Yu unable to get off the back row, he'll start the race 20th at best Really disappointing there from Lance Stroll 
on the last two visits here, actually, he has not made it out of Q1. Make that three now. He'll be massively disappointed with that, especially when you see Alonso sitting nice and pretty up there in P2. He's also, they both cars have got the upgrades. On Stroll had first pick first in free practice. One in the two sessions yesterday, and they were put onto Alonso's car, and they seem to be working pretty decent for, for Alonso for now. An impressive lap also from, from Ocon, uh, comparing to, to Gasly as well was P10 for a little split second of time but Gasly as we we are just seeing pictures here's his radio yeah it was a good lap again the traction can't go back on power that was Gasly then with uh, traction and power issues halting him from progressing through into the next part of qualifying it, that was a sensational lap from Valtteri Bottas in a salvo. He went eighth fastest at the end, ahead of Hamilton and Ricardo, his teammate, out in 20th. Not much more I could do there. Sliding all over the place. And I was about to say, was there an issue for Joe? That was him on the radio in the other salvo. It was sound like there wasn't much more he could do, Alice. No, actually, looking at the sector times, Harry, of those that didn't didn't necessarily improve, it all seems to be the last sector. And the sound you can hear now is riding on board with Joe, and he did have a kick of oversteer actually on the exit of the second to last corner. But Gasly didn't do a personal best in the last sector. Neither did Stroll. Neither did Joe. Uh, so all struggling, I don't think Sargent, I think we could add him to that list as well. So tyres possibly giving up the ghost in that final sector for those drivers or purely just feeling like they haven't quite got the car underneath them. Uh, and the big name hit out of that session as well. Uh, Aston Martin driver Lance Stroll uh, will not make it through uh, into the next part of qualifying. 16th at best till start. Uh, his teammate ended that session second fastest, Andrew. Uh, yeah, that's, um, I mean, look, he's not Fernando Alonso, is he, Lance Stroll? That's become, that's been, that's become very clear for quite a while, but eight tenths nearly it off, that's, uh, that's quite embarrassing. Um, just to park that though, it's not that big a surprise, Stroll to be some way off Alonso. There's some encouragement for Daniel Ricciardo um, in tenth place there. He's out qualified, at least in that session, he's still one, at least one session to go for both the uh, RB drivers. But it's the first time all year Ricardo's been ahead of Sonoda. He's been struggling uh, so far this season. Um, here's some radio. We are through. Well done. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Good job. <laughs> Esteban Ocon's radio there makes it through into Q2 and continues uh, his uh, form so far about qualifying uh, his teammate Pierre Gasly uh, in every qualifying so far this season. Yeah, so that's that's encouraging for Ricardo. And also the Alpine situation is very interesting, I think, uh, Alice, because Gasly had the edge on Ocon through most of last year. Once he'd got his feet under the table after joining Alpine at the start of last season, Gasly was definitely the more impressive of those two performers. But so at the start of this season, Alpine is struggling full stop anyway, but Gasly has been quite some way off Ocon all year so far. It's like three tenths again today. I just don't understand what's going on. From what I can gather, of course, it's not driver ability. He did a great job last year hopping into the, the Alpine, his first time with the team last year. It is just dialing the car, getting the setup right for, for him. Obviously, every driver is, is different. You can have one setup that works for one driver and one setup that doesn't work for another driver. Um, and often they say, well, the teammate's fast in that car. Yeah, but maybe the setup's not quite quite working. I mean, I'm not saying the Alonso gap is the stroll gap is the setup. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But when it's fairly close, maybe it isn't just the setup that, that's working. So I think Gasly is just struggling to dial in with personally with that Alpine. But Ocon is feeling a little bit more more comfortable 
with uh, with the car at the moment. They're lacking rear grip, aren't they, Alpine? Lacking rear downforce. That's what uh, Gasly was saying effectively when he said, I can't get back on the power, I've got no traction. And it looked like that from the pictures we've seen. Exactly. So maybe he's a bit less comfortable with a car that moves around at the rear than Ocon is in this situation. Maybe when the car's a bit more dialed in, he's... Uh, he feels it. He feels able to explore the outer limits a bit more than when he than when the car's in the situation that it is at the moment. They do have upgrades coming, Alpine, but um, what so does everybody else? Yeah, what level of confidence we should have in those upgrades is an interesting question. Given, I, I find Alpine a, a very strange situation. They've they've changed the philosophy of their car. They say this year they've moved the suspension around to create more uh, space for the airflow, which in theory should create more downforce. But they started the season at the launch of the car saying, well, we've done this, but it means we're going to start the season on the back foot. Well, surely you change the car to make it faster, not slower. Um, they talked about having more facility to develop this new car, but we haven't seen that yet. Um, and they've really, they're a team that's uh, really lost its way. Um, uh, it starts way back uh, with the driver choices that they made or the lack of driver choices that they should have made, I should say, in 2022 when they managed to lose both Fernando Alonso and Oscar Piastri <laughs> in the same week, pretty much. Um, and they've lost some senior personnel, uh, you know, of, of pretty high calibre, uh, lots of them, actually. And when you, you lose drivers of the calibre of Fernando Alonso who used to set a target for Esteban Ocon basically that Ocon could get to by the end of the weekend but not be at the start of the season at the weekend and you lose people of the calibre of Bob Bell for example who's a very accomplished engineer who's gone to Aston Martin Alan Pemain the sporting director who they sacked last summer and is now at RB um, you know M Matt Harmon who was at Mercedes before he was at Alpine um, you know okay the team hadn't been going well but it's not necessarily because of those people and you have to question some of the decisions that have been made at Alpine over the last couple of years well there'll be uh, some joy in that garage at least as one car made it through into this next part of qualifying in the form of Esteban Ocon uh, we're now into Q2 but we have lost Lance Stroll in the Aston Martin Pierre Gasly in the Alpine Kevin Magnussen in the Haas Logan Sargent in the Williams and Joe Guan Yu in the Sauber no longer a part of qualifying as we look to eliminate the next slowest five drivers everybody from 11th down to 15th will be eliminated at the end of the next 13 or so minutes uh, and we are already underway for Q2. Only three cars out on track at the moment. Make that four. Piastri has come out of the pit lane to join the two Red Bulls of Perez and Verstappen and Nico Hülkenberg and the sole remaining Haas out there as well. Uh, another great job by Hülkenberg, actually, it must be said, to get through uh, into Q2 in a car that hasn't looked particularly on pace so far this weekend. No, and they naturally struggle, don't they, at the higher speed areas of circuits. But uh, Hülkenberg likes a, a, a cheeky go at the qualifying. Isn't he? He's, he's uh, shown his one lap pace is impressive. Same possibly with the one lap pace of the car too. So he'll be overly pleased with that, I'm sure, as Max Verstappen now starts his first flying lap of this Q2 session. Up lovely, lovely pictures we, we're getting to see as he flies through the, the curves up to Dunlop Curve as well. And now flying and making his way quite quickly into Degna. I have to say, Verstappen looks absolutely imperious so far in this qualifying session. He went out early in the first session, set a time that no one could get within three tenths of, um, and uh, sat in the garage the rest of the uh, session. Looks like he's about to do the same thing again here. First guy out on track, pretty much, about to set a time. I bet you he doesn't go out again. I bet you no one gets close to his time over the next ten minutes or whatever it is. I can't see him. I can't see anything happening other than him being on pole by two or three tenths I would guess at the moment maybe even more we'll hold you to that we we'll love come, we'll the positivity come back to it. <laughs> saying that Andrew we've got uh, Perez purple in sector one and purple in sector two we'll wait for Max Verstappen to come over the line I'm just I'm just trying to you know maybe put some optimism in there that might not be but we'll see Max Verstappen comes through the final section of corners foot to the floor now through turn 18 across the line Harry and he goes fastest 
Well, there's only one time on the board so far. What can Perez do when he comes across the line? You're right there. Perez had been looking quick in the uh, first two sectors, uh, but it's not enough for Sergio Perez. He goes into second spot. Uh, it's Verstappen fast as well. 128.740. Uh, so mere hundreds of a thousandth of a second between uh, Verstappen and Perez at the moment. Alonso in the Aston Martin gets up uh, and uh, begins his first flying lap as he plunges down into turns one and two. Uh, buzz in corner as some might know as now on the inside corner with Sebastian Vettel last year launching his biodiversity project uh, for the bees uh, I was so confused then I was like buzzing corner yeah. what goes on at that corner there you go it's, uh, it's for the bees uh, and, the, and, the, and the biodiversity you said that I suddenly started thinking of the 1998 Jordan in its tobacco friendly uh, <laughs> livery <laughs> oh, well Formula 1 is cyclical isn't it uh, 10 minutes remaining then of uh, Q2 and uh, everybody then making their way out, out onto the track. Uh, outlaps for the two Ferraris at the moment along with uh, Sauber, uh, the Bottas of Sauber and the RB of Daniel Ricciardo. Alex Albon and the Williams uh, not heading out on track just yet. He's the last remaining car uh, in the pit lane with 10 minutes to go. It's Lando Norris in the McLaren who's currently fastest of anybody uh, in the first sector. Uh, the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton is on a decent lap as well, feeling more optimistic optimistic this weekend in that car the best it's ever felt uh, to start a weekend he was saying post free practice one and this is the sound of the sole remaining Aston Martin of Fernando Alonso as he makes his way into the final chicane takes a good bit of curb on the inside for turn 16 unsettles the car slightly DRS activated round the final corner crosses the line it's a 129.0 to put the Spaniard third fastest uh, Sergio Perez is the fastest middle sector as both Red Bulls uh, pit it's Norris fastest in the first sector Verstappen has uh, the final sector to his name Hamilton crosses the line fifth fast is Lando Norris to the line third fastest for the McLaren driver who takes a, a, a very different line compared to most other drivers he really hugs that inside line coming out uh, of the final corner Yuki Tsunoda in the RB crosses the line to go seventh fastest in the uh, RB Hulkenberg and Leclerc uh, Hulkenberg currently ninth Leclerc on a lap at the moment coming through uh, the middle sector Russell next across the line goes seventh yeah, good effort there from Lando Norris. Purple in that first sector, just lacked a couple of tenths compared to Max Verstappen in the second. Sad you can hear now is of Charles Leclerc. Two tenths down, Max Verstappen at the moment. He heads through 130R, foot flat, heavy on the brakes to the chicane that slightly bounces his Ferrari as well, head wobbling about in the cockpit. But he manages to make it through, but only jumps up to P6. So not what we're expecting to see from the Ferraris this weekend. Uh, no, Sainz uh, goes quicker in the other Ferrari. He gets himself up into the top five uh, as Bottas gets into the top ten. Uh, the finished driver in that Salva uh, finding some good pace so far. That puts uh, Sonoda down into 11th uh, in the elimination zone, along with Hulkenberg, Ocon, Ricardo, and Albon in the other will in the will sole remaining Williams, who has yet uh, to set a lap time still uh, in the pits. Uh, Verstappen is fastest from Perez, Norris in third, Alonso fourth, and Sainz uh, that top five. Hearing though uh, that Hamilton was eighth with used tyres. It's looking like it's going the way once again of Max Verstappen. We're currently in the second part of qualifying and Verstappen is fastest ahead of the other Red Bull. Lando Norris though looking quick in the McLaren, currently third fastest. Still to play for though ahead of the final part of qualifying coming up in a few moments. Okay, so a little bit of a lull then now as uh, cars come back into the pits. Um, hearing that, yeah, Hamilton um, was on a used set of tyres. He only went eighth fastest. His teammate Russell uh, down in ninth as well, about a second off uh, Verstappen. Uh, six minutes and 43 seconds remain. Hulkenberg had his lap time deleted. Track limits down at turn 13, and that is the entry, well, the exit, sorry, should I say, of the first part of Spoon, so clearly ran slightly wide, so that's given him a bit more of a tougher job to do. So technically he hasn't set a time. He uh, now has to go again. We haven't had times on the board from Alex Albon either. 
Uh, Esteban Ocon has not really set a representative time either. Same with, you could go with Daniel Ricciardo, unless that's a, a slight mistake. But, uh, yeah. They'll uh, have to go out again. Esteban Ocon looks like he possibly would have been on a used set of softs. And maybe the same could actually be said for the, the two RBs as well. I'm still very impressed from uh, Valtteri Bottas in the Sauber at the moment, having a great run of things, uh, trying to get into that uh, Q3 appearance. Last Q3 appearance for Sauber uh, was Bottas back in uh, that last year in Las Vegas, well, Andrew. he's, you know, he's no mean peddler around Suzuki. He's won here, remember? Um, in, I can't remember which year. But not year in a Sauber. In, no, but in a Mercedes against Lewis Hamilton, which is no mean feat. Here's uh, Science's radio. Uh, Ricky, uh, right. it was quite flat out. The throttle pedal felt uh, softer at the top of the pedal. Check. Okay, understood. The I top. felt it uh, before track 13. Changing. So that's signs there talking about changes uh, to his uh, throttle pedal. So uh, that's a little bit of a worrying thing to be having in during qualifying. Well, it's uh, the fly-by-wire throttles, there's no cable, so he's talking about the feel that he's getting, uh, so the throttle wasn't giving him the sharpness that he was expecting uh, at the top of the range there. Alice, is that correct? That is correct. There you go. <laughs> um, and uh, and yes, goodness, I got that right. Yeah, well done, well done. <laughs> Check with the racing driver. Yes, excellent. Um, and uh, and yeah, you make a very good point about uh, Valtteri Bottas as well, Andrew. Of course, um, and was always quite quite revered for his uh, his qualifying pace over, over one lap. Yeah, I think that was an oversell. Actually, you when you look at his averages against Hamilton, he was at the bottom end of, of Hamilton's teammates, not the top. Oh, okay. But um, but uh, nevertheless, he did win a Suzuka. We're, um, we're up and down on Bottas here. Yeah, the last two yeah. minutes. <laughs> Underrated, overrated. Uh, Where are we? Yeah. So if you want, uh, you want a. Um, I could find the Hamilton teammate qualifying comparisons. Oh if yeah, you want. that'll be good. Go on. Yeah, go go on. On. We'll, we'll leave you with that, and we'll come back to you uh, as uh, we get the last four minutes uh, of Q2 underway. Nico Hülkenberg being sent back out in the Haas had his lap time uh, deleted for track limits uh, at turn 13 which is uh, the entrance uh, to uh, Spoon Curve the uh, double left-hander that runs you downhill and then onto the back straight towards the fast left-hander of 130R uh, joining him out on track are the two Mercedes of uh, Lewis uh, Hamilton and George Russell uh, also out there Esteban Ocon in the Alpine and uh, Alex Albon is not yet out there. So uh, Williams biding their time for what I imagine will be their one and only run in this session, Alice. They were with three minutes left on the clock. They haven't got enough time to, to do this and then come back in. Albon leaving it fairly late, though. Uh, he's just coming out of the pits now, so uh, must have read my mind or maybe they're tuning into the commentary but they're they're back out now andrew has uh, put his hand up have we got these qualifying stats hamilton qualifying yeah, stats? yes so hamilton andrew? qualifying pace against his teammates uh, it won't surprise you that the closest teammate to him in qualifying was fernando alonso <laughs> <laughs> the three thousandths apart wow um uh, george russell is next best he's like about four hundredths there apart uh, it's quite close between those two. i can't remember which way around it is between those two actually i think hamilton might be slightly faster but it's, 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 it's been changing so much between them is so close it's hard to tell after that they're the two closest after that Rosberg is next then Button then Bottas then Heike Coverline okay okay all right well that's the so second worst uh, well <laughs> at the moment looking for to get through to Q3 in the south of about to read Bottas uh, putting those statistics aside or fifth uh, best <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, two very opposite ends in the commentary box next to me um Two minutes left of this session then, and uh, the uh, elimination zone, the bottom five at risk of being knocked out. Yuki Tsunoda in the RB, the Alpine of Esteban Ocon, the other RB of Daniel Ricciardo, the Haas of Nico Hülkenberg, and the Williams of Alex Albon, who, as Alice just said, has now emerged from the pit lane for what will be his one and only run. I'll find the Russell one, by the way. OK, I'm enjoying this. Uh, we'll have more of this in the podcast, I'm sure, which you can hear all the analysis on uh, later uh, after uh, qualifying is over check out the check and flag podcast on bbc sounds and wherever you get your podcasts right the two mercedes then back out on track hamilton currently eighth 
ahead of Russell in ninth on the soft set of tyres, uh, stuck a new set on and uh, going again to try and cement their position because they are on the periphery here. Only Bottas is behind them, uh, giving them the nudge. Sonoda is just coming to the end of his outlap at the moment. He's an 11th, looking to try uh, and get a top 10 qualifying result for his home race uh, for Sunday's Grand Prix. And Esteban Ocon having a, a fairly decent uh, first sector in the Alpine. Esteban Ocon's uh, highest qualifying position uh, so far for the Frenchman has been 15th uh, last time out in Australia. So looking to try and better that as Alpine bids to develop that car, find more pace and get themselves off the back of the grid. Hamilton then coming up towards the left-hander of 130. He's less than half a tenth off Max Verstappen's quickest time through the middle sector. So Hamilton finding time at the moment. Russell also finding time, but Hamilton is going quicker than his teammate at the moment. And he crosses the line. Where does the seven-time champion get up to? It's third fastest for Hamilton, who manages to put a little bit of distance between himself and the elimination zone. His teammate will be next across the line. Did find time, but not as much as his teammates. Slots into seventh for George Russell. That puts Piastri, Leclerc, and Hulkenberg, who gets across the line in his house, up into the top ten. But we now look at the bottom end. Esteban Ocon, how close can he get across the line? Can he get into the top ten? No, it's 11th fastest and he just gets knocked down as well because Daniel Ricciardo is coming around in the RB looking quick too in 10th gets up into the top 10 what can his teammate Yuki Tsunoda do who's finding time still coming through into the final sector now Albon in his one and only lap for Williams comes across the line it's 12th fastest for the Thai driver Ricardo is the driver at risk here. Can his teammate knock him out of the top 10? He absolutely can. Yuki Tsunoda into the top 10, but he'll be at risk because Valtteri Bottas has been looking quick all, week, all qualifying long. Can he convert it into a top 10? No, he can't. The Sauber driver manages 13th at best. Out of Q2, Daniel Ricciardo in the RB. The Haas of Nico Hülkenberg. The Sauber of Valtteri Bottas. The Williams of Alex Albon. And the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. Charge, yeah, good luck. Well done, guys. That's Yuki Tsunoda on the radio then. So, yeah, really solid lap. Not much between him and Ricardo, but he does knock his teammate out of qualifying. He does. Half a tenth between the two of them. So, better effort there from Ricardo compared to the last, last time out, that's for sure. But he'll be happy with that, and so are the crowd. Home hero here this weekend is Yuki Tsunoda. And it's fairly close at the top there between the two Red Bulls. Hamilton a little bit behind, a tenth and a half behind. Max Verstappen, Norris two tenths off, Alonso three and a half tenths off. So times are actually fairly close. So the top nine are split really between four and a half tenths. Yuki Tsunoda's nearly seven tenths off and then the gaps sort of stretch out a little bit with Ocon rounding out the top 15 one second off. Do you want those Mercedes stats for Russell? Yes, Go on, please. Then. Okay, so in, 19, in 2022, Hamilton was marginally the faster by five hundredths of a second to Russell. Wow, okay. Uh, in 23, Russell was marginally the faster by four thousandths to Hamilton. And this year it's early days and Hamilton's not had a good start to the season and Russell's ahead by 0.143 seconds, but I dare say it's not going to stay like that for the rest of the year and it'd be too early to judge it after three races. Yeah. Wow, that is tight, isn't it, between those two? Um... It'll be interesting to monitor that uh, as the rest of the season uh, unfolds, for sure, between Russell and uh, and Hamilton. Uh, just uh, been uh, having a little look as well at uh, Alex Albon's uh, final, first and final flying lap that he got. Quite a, a clunky final sector, clouting the curves of the chicane, unsettling the car. In fact, a lot of the drivers really are finding these uh, curves coming into the chicane really having to clout them and change the direction of the cars to make them way through the, the Casio triangle as it's known as turns uh, 16 17 and 18 and, and you've got to get a good exit out of there Alice haven't you because that powers you onto the main straight yeah the reason why they're they're using okay mate so that is P15 unfortunately copy okay very good go let's see what we can do tomorrow yeah copy that good job so that's Esteban Ocon getting out of the car now but uh, the reason why they're, they're using 
those curves. They are fairly big curves, but the, the chicane there, the final sort of couple of corners, is quite tight. So instead of sort of meandering your way through without using the curb, actually using a bit of the, or a lot of the curb there, sometimes it is a little bit too much from some of the drivers, which is unsettling the car too much, but it helps with the rotation of the car, because of course your exit is, is highly important there. And if you are slightly too left and you don't, too far to the left through the first part in 16 and you don't get the car nicely rotated for 17, that's going to really hamper getting on the throttle and getting a clean exit out through then 17 into 18 and, and down that long straight. Well, the grandstands and the grassy banks and the almost amphitheater uh, like grandstands around this Suzuka track absolutely filled to the brim with uh, happy, smiling fans as we get ready for the top 10 shootout to set the grid or the final part of the grid for the Japanese Grand Prix and uh, it will be Yuki Tsunoda who just made his way through into uh, Q3 for the third consecutive time uh, this season and uh, out goes Daniel Ricciardo it will be his best start of the season though uh, from 11th Hülkenberg will be 12th Bottas 13th Albon and Ocon knocked out of that session 15th for the Alpine driver and we lost in Q1 Stroll Gasly Magnussen Sargent and Joe through then into the top 10 it's the two Red Bulls who look like they will lock out the front row it's quite tight between them just 12 thousandths of a second between Verstappen and Perez at the end of Q2 all right Daniel I know you always uh, need to do a little bit better but uh, you should be pleased when you're good place yeah, I'm obviously not, but I appreciate we've done well. Yeah, let's focus on the positive. I would say that's a strange compliment, isn't it? Uh, that's Daniel Ricciardo talking to his uh, engineer. Always, uh, uh, well, I suppose in the wider reference of things, there's a lot of pressure on Ricciardo right now to improve, and uh, he has made a slight improvement this weekend. He's much closer to Sonoda. I think the engineer means well there, doesn't he? It it's, might be a bit lost in translation, It's not what maybe. the racing driver wants to hear. You've been beaten by your teammate, but you should be pleased because before you were really rubbish, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was that's getting what, at. That. That's, that's what, what Ricardo would have heard in that comment. That's how I would have heard it as well, or that's how I have heard it. <laughs> well then, uh, Ricardo, yeah, just being uh, biffed out of Q3 by his teammate, Yuki Tsunoda, uh, who joined the two Red Bulls, uh, and really... In terms of baffle, we're looking at who's going to get on that second row because the Red Bulls, if they continue the pace that they're showing at the moment, will have that one sewn up. And right now, Alice, well, it's it's kind of nip and tuck between the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and the McLaren of Lando Norris. Yeah, fight between those two Brits for the, let's say, P3, I would say. The Red Bulls are looking slightly clear, but Perez, we never know uh, with him. It's a little bit up and down, but he was quite close to his teammate in that final part of qualifying but we do see Max Verstappen don't we pull it out of the bag usually and he'll I'm guessing he's going to stretch his legs even further in this Q3 session not too long now before the drivers will be heading out on track temperature watch has all pretty much stayed the same to be honest the wind has picked up ever so slightly and at the end of free practice three that was uh, sort of I would say disrupting the driver's laps ever so slightly. Max Verstappen came across the radio, didn't he, saying the car all of a sudden through this part of track has, has changed and that was basically due to the wind sort of gusting and changing direction, which certainly, of course, will affect the handling of the cars. But uh, it's just died down ever so slightly, so we'll keep an eye on that. The Ferraris are looking like they're struggling signed sick at the end of that session Charles Leclerc only ninth to come the end of that session uh, off the high of Melbourne it, it's uh, it's not quite going their way so far in a very different track no it's not is it we expected better from them and I think they were expecting better certainly after their performance in the first free practice session as we've got green light at the end of the pit lane who's out first on track let's see is Lewis Hamilton followed by Russell Max Verstappen crawls his way 
out, just leaving a gap from George Russell, then Perez, and then As uh, the Aston Martin there of Fernando Alonso, the only remaining Aston Martin in this qualifying session. As everyone's sort of trying to get their their gaps with 11 minutes and 23, 22 seconds remaining. Yeah, final part of qualifying then underway. And uh, it's soft tyres for all once again, making their way around this iconic 18 turn, 10 to the right, 8 to the left, 5.8 kilometre circuit run, running in a figure of eight configuration, unique in its kind, and uh, a proper driver's track right from the very off as you're plunged down through turns one and two, and then as you say, Alice, it's almost like a roller coaster ride up through the S curves that bring you round the Dunlop curve before you suddenly at Degna with the gravel so close and the grass there is not much runoff if you make one small mistake you are punished for it and in qualifying as well in these final stages one small off can completely ruin your lap and the way the tyres are working at the moment you're really only get, getting one chance with the lap with the tyre with its best condition to set that lap we've seen so many drivers run wide on the exit of the, the second Degna and uh, you can't afford to do that not in Q3 no, you certainly can't. This is when the pressure really is ramped on for those fighting at the front end for, for pole position. Lewis Hamilton building up the pace, building up temperature in those tyres, heating them from inside out. Of course, they have tyre warmers, but as soon as those are removed and the car is placed on the ground, they'll immediately start to lose temperature. Sparks fly out the back of his Mercedes. He floats through quite nicely and settled there through turn one now up through the s curves at three four five six and then up through dunlop curve turn seven which is where we saw logan Sargent find the wall in a pretty hard fashion must be said purple in the first sector for lewis hamilton but of course he is the first driver to set uh, a lap time and head through these sectors into the left hand of the hairpin. Hamilton was the first car out on track and actually runs a little bit wide coming out of the exit. Kicks up a bit of dust off line. Keeps his foot planted in the rundown to spoon curve. The double left hand up slightly downhill, which takes you down the back straight towards the fastest corner on the circuit. The left hand of 130R. Seen some pretty spectacular overtakes and incidents there in Suzuka's long esteemed history. Hamilton flat out through the left hander as he then breaks for the final chicane into the right hander. Doesn't take too much curve, keeps the car nice and smooth as the sun peeks out from behind the clouds and glints off the front end of that Mercedes. Hamilton crosses the line and the first time on the board is a 1.28.766. Verstappen's coming into the chicane now. We'll see what he's got. Verstappen's fastest of anybody in the middle sector. Land Norris has the fastest first sector. Verstappen across the line, half a second quicker, takes provisional pole. Howells in second. Russell, a couple of tenths back from his teammate in third. What can the other Red Bull of Sergio Perez do? Slots in to second place, three and a half tenths behind his teammate. Perez slotting in, that's still a big gap, isn't it? Norris looking pretty decent there in the first sector. We're still waiting for him to come through that middle sector. The Red Bull is certainly superior compared to everybody else in that middle sector. And actually, Lando Norris is a tenth and a half off Max Verstappen's best overall in that middle sector. But Perez, even though he is three and a half tenths or over three and a half tenths off, he's not had a front row start since Belgium in last year, P2. So he'll be hoping, but saying that, Lando Norris Two and a half tenths off, Max Verstappen jumps up, Harry, into P2. Splits the Red Bulls, does the McLaren driver. It's Verstappen ahead of Norris, then comes Perez. Signs in the Ferrari as well, sneaking up into fourth. It was a decent lap from Piastri, lost a bit of time in the final sector. Uh, top five at the moment, ahead of Hamilton. Then comes Alonso in seventh. Russell uh, is eighth. Yuki Tsunoda across the line in his RB. 
puts in the ninth fastest lap time. We have still yet to see Charles Leclerc in the other Ferrari emerge from the garage. And as I say that on cue, he is released by his engineers out into the fast lane. And as everybody will be coming back into the pits, he'll be on his outlap and should have the track all to himself. Six and a half minutes left on the clock. Yeah, he's, I'm guessing he's only going to do one run compared to to those around him because certainly with this amount of time, by the time he's done this build lap, there'll be about four minutes of the, the session remaining. So Leclerc either saving something, keeping something up his sleeve for tomorrow or he just feels, well, one lap is going to be enough for me. I think he had two runs, didn't he, in uh, Q2, whereas the others have done, the other front runners have done one, uh, or one with, uh, on new and one on used. Uh, so he, because I, I don't know what's going on, but Leclerc does seem to be struggling compared to Sainz since the start of this season with this new Ferrari. He's not quite on Sainz's level, which is not normal. You know, Leclerc is on balance. Here's Alonso's radio. We are P7 at the moment. It's a tenth and a half to get to P4. I don't know what to do to go faster, mate. I thought it was a good lap. <laughs> That's Alonso on the radio. When Alonso is saying he doesn't know what to do to go faster, well, you think he's probably got the most out of that Aston Martin that he can at the moment. Those comments from engineers always make me chuckle because those are the type of comments where it says, right, so, so we, we, this is good. We're fairly happy with the position we're in, but just pull your finger out a little bit more. All you've got to do is find a tenth and a half. Live is as simple as that to find a tenth and a half. And Alonso's gone, yeah, mate, I, I'm, I am pushing here. <laughs> I'm not just driving around gently. I thought it was a pretty decent lap. So, uh, yeah, typical engineer comment there. What's interesting about Fernando Alonso, here's Hamilton's radio. OK, Lewis, so that's uh, half a second to, to Verstappen. There's a half second, man. Uh, it's in downforce, Lewis, is where it is. Uh, that's the answer to that. <laughs> um, Alonso, seems to, he seems to, relative to the field, he overachieves in the first part of qualifying and then appears to slip back often uh, through the rest of qualifying. And it's something that I've talked to him about. He knows it happens. Um, and he thinks his his hurry. Uh, well, uh, well, I absolutely agree. I think uh, it certainly does seem that way. He's currently uh, six tenths down uh, in uh, in seventh at the moment and has come back into the pits. Everybody uh, back into the pits at the moment, uh, with the exception of Charles Leclerc, who is currently out there on his own on what we expect will be his one and only flying lap after running twice in Q2. And uh, on the soft running of tyre, personal best for him in the first sector, having a good one so far through the middle sector, just making his way through the left-hander of Spoon Curve, the double left-hander, turns 13 and 14. We've seen a couple of drivers there have their lap time deleted for exceeding track limits. No such case for the Monegasque as he now approaches the left-hander of 130R, fastest of anybody in the middle sector. His teammate, Carlos Sainz, put in a lap good enough for fourth place and has just gone back out on track in these closing stages. What can Charles Leclerc do round the final corner across the line? Loses that time in the final sector, half a second off. It's only seventh fastest for Charles Leclerc. Still not as quick as his teammate and only ahead of Alonso, Russell and Sonoda, who we all expect to go again. He's not got the pace in the first sector either, Harry. Three tenths off uh, Lando Norris's best in that sector. So really not happy, is he, Charles Leclerc? As the Red Bulls now and pretty much everybody else, all Bart, Hamilton and Russell, have, uh, have made their way back on circuit. OK, final stages then of qualifying for Q3, the top ten as we set the final part of the grid for the Japanese Grand Prix. It's Max Verstappen who is looking for his 36th career pole position. And after the blip of a retirement last time out in Melbourne, looking to strike back with a vengeance. His teammate Sergio Perez is currently third fastest. Lando Norris in the McLaren putting in a spectacular lap early doors to split the two Red Bulls. And it's certainly looking more and more that it's McLaren and Norris to be the next best. And Sainz certainly looking in for a good lap. 
that's the best I can I, that I can do. Honestly. Honestly. I, uh, I uh, don't get it. Frustration there from Charles Leclerc. Horrible place to be as a driver when you just don't know where that time is and you're comfortable with the car. Really frustrating, but it's going to be Sergio Perez now that's going to set the first benchmark on this second run in Q3. Through the first sector, he's about to emerge. Where is he in relation to Max Verstappen on the board? Slightly faster, Harry. This is the final stages of qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix. Guiding you through all the coverage is myself, Harry Benjamin. Alongside me is the racing driver, Alice Powell, and BBC F1 correspondent, Andrew Benson. A minute and 10 seconds left as we set the top 10 for the Japanese Grand Prix. It's looking advantage Max Verstappen, who already has the fastest laps on a 128.2. He's three tenths clear of Lando Norris in the McLaren, and he's on his final lap, and he is going even faster in the first sector. Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, who we heard on the radio a moment ago, struggling to find lap time. He'll start at best seventh for the moment. He's coming to the pits. He won't get another chance. Alonso, Russell and Sonoda all behind him and out on track again. Perez, fastest in the middle sector in the second Red Bull. Verstappen can't match Perez in the middle sector. Can Perez mount a late challenge here? Perez across the line? No, he can't. He closes in on his teammate, but he still can't get quick it's uh, 23 thousandths of a second, though, between Perez and Verstappen. Verstappen, though, on his final lap, comes across the line and cements pole position for Max Verstappen over half a tenth clear of his teammate, Sergio Perez. Lando Norris is out on his final flying lap as well. He's had a decent middle sector. What can Carlos Sainz do around the final corner? Stays put in fourth. Yuki Tsunoda, the home hero for RB, across the line. Tenth fastest, stays tenth fastest. He'll start in in the top 10 for his home Grand Prix. Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin, struggling to get that extra 10th that he needs to catapult himself up the field. He's currently down in eighth, round the final corner for the Spaniard. He finds some more time and it's enough for a top five star for Fernando Alonso. Lando Norris can't improve. He crosses the line and stays third fastest in front of Sainz. We look next to Oscar Piastri and George Russell. Piastri crosses the line. He doesn't improve. He stays in sixth fastest. Lewis Hamilton is also out there as well. His teammate George Russell just coming towards the left-hander of 130R in the middle sector. His teammate Hamilton will cross the line first. Hamilton's had an okay middle sector. He's currently down in seventh fastest. Half a tenth down off Verstappen's time. Can he improve? No. The seven-time champ stays seventh. Not seeing too much improvement then in these closing stages. Russell round the final corner. What can the British driver do? He can't improve. Stays in ninth. And that is quite qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix and on pole position it will be Max Verstappen in the Red Bull who takes his 36th career pole position it's a Red Bull 1-2 with Perez in second Lando Norris best of the rest in third Sainz for Ferrari is fourth Alonso rounds out the top five Piastri sixth Hamilton seventh Leclerc eighth Russell ninth and Yuki Tsunoda the Japanese driver rounds out the top ten Here's Verstappen on the radio. Not bad, not bad. I mean, it would have been a lot, but it doesn't matter. It's one for P1. Yeah, well done, Max. P1 again, well done. Nice job. Yeah, nice one, two as well, so that's good. Well, Alice, I was doing my best to hype up the Jeopardy there, but there wasn't really too much. Um, not really a huge rate of improvement for anybody in those final stages. No, Max actually didn't improve in his final sector. Did a very good job in that first sector. That's where, essentially, he got Perez. I think Perez should be pretty happy with that. Uh, just over half a tenth separating them. And Max actually sounds pretty happy. Usually when we hear him on pole position, he's uh, quite subdued and like... You know, yeah, that was all right, not too bad. But uh, he'll be pleased. Lando Norris, I don't know what happened there with both of the McLarens, actually. They were the only ones that really weren't making any improvements in any of the sectors. But I'm still sure Lando will be pretty happy sitting there in third place.
That was a good lap from Sergio Perez. Just over half a tenth between himself and Max Verstappen. I think he'll be quite encouraged with that, and he really needed that as well, don't you think, after after Melbourne, where there was all this talk about, well, in, here's the number two driver in that team. When Max Verstappen cannot win, he, Perez should be there. He wasn't there. This is a nice marker to bounce back with. Yeah, no, it certainly is. That's what Red Bull needed. They need him there. They need him sort of essentially backing up Max Verstappen. And that's what he has done today. He's been very close. His aim, of course, tomorrow, secretly, even if the team do say, look, don't attack Perez, he's going to want to try and attack Max down there into turn one. He has had 11 visits here, only one podium, and that was P2 uh, a couple of years ago in 2020, where he had that great fight with Charles Leclerc. Uh, but of course, he'll be wanting to improve that and try and jump his teammate tomorrow. But I think Max has just got the edge. Uh, and uh, disappointment for Charles Leclerc in that Ferrari down in eighth spot. Yeah, he's massively disappointed. He's just just sounds really frustrated. I mean, the gap's not massively big to his teammate, just over one tenth. But uh, they're not where they wanted to be. Uh, well. Uh we shall see how it all unfolds in the race. On pole, it will be Verstappen ahead of Perez, Norris, Sainz, Alonso, the top five, Piastri, Hamilton, Leclerc, Russell, Sonoda, the top ten, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Albon, Ocon, the top 15, Stroll, Gasly, Magnussen, Sargent, and Joe, the 20 drivers. Uh, we'll be anal analysing all of that uh, in the Checkered Flag podcast, which you will see uh, and uh, in your podcast fees and on BBC Sounds a little later on today, and to keep up to date with everything on the BBC Sport website. Uh, my thanks to the BBC's F one correspondent Andrew Benson racing driver at Alice Power I've been Harry Benjamin the race will be on five live build up from 5.45 in the morning lights out from six o'clock and this has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live